um, appreciate. I think that the central challenge that we face as a country is how to revitalize the economy. Um, and many of us, probably most of the people in this room, feel that technology offers great promise in contributing to that. But the more difficult challenge is how do we do that in a way that broadly benefits Americans, that includes people who aren't at the top uh, economically or uh, don't have advanced degrees. We are today in America part of a world where GDP growth is faster outside our own borders, where China, India, and Brazil together are in excess of 20% of global GDP. And so we need to understand how we might expand our economic growth at home in this environment of global GDP growth. Is there a way that we can reverse the pipe, if you will, and instead of exporting jobs through outsourcing, is it possible for us to export services that will create jobs here at home? This is really skill-intensive stuff. And because the U.S. is still a skill-abundant place, we have comparative advantage in these activities. We run a trade surplus, a persistent trade surplus in services exports. Yet if you look at service businesses, they are far less globally engaged than manufacturing firms. What's the problem? Well, I think policy impediments are a big part of it. The BRICs that Zoe mentioned where there's a lot of growth they have significantly higher trade barriers to services, by some estimates six, seven times the barriers that the U.S. imposes. So I think that that's where there's a big opportunity to export U.S. services to these fast-growing economies. There's a huge infrastructure boom underway. By some estimates, $40 trillion will be spent over the next two decades, most of that in the BRICS. You know, think about you know, the, the water, sewer, highways, airports, harbors, commercial, residential real estate, gonna require an army of architects, engineers, project managers, financiers, insurers, all the kinds of tradable services where U.S. businesses have comparative advantage. With the development of technologies from the internet to cloud computing to the kinds of things that many of you are doing, a lot of the jobs to provide these services can be performed in the U.S. Services are about 70% of our GDP, and support about three out of four jobs in America today. Services are also a critical component of the global economy. I think of services as the, uh, the gears and the grease in a well-oiled machine. So ICT services, for example, critical. Financial services, banking especially. Uh, energy services, logistics. <laughs> Uh, delivery, transportation, these are all absolutely essential for the growth of a global economy and the kind of, of uh, supply chains that we have seen emerging. We are the largest services exporter in the world, so I think there is much to be, to be proud of here. At the same time, we all feel that there's more we can do, and so we want to see just how services can become more competitive and expand internationally so that we can meet the goal of doubling all of our exports by the end of 2014, which isn't so far off. Uh, it's a five-year plan. And also creating uh, two million additional jobs. Well, I think the, the export of services is a critical component. One of the first questions we almost want to ask ourselves is, why in the world do we have a trade deficit to start with? Here's a country with un unbelievable natural resources, a trained workforce. So, if I read the numbers, 2011, we had a $560 billion trade deficit, of which uh, $350 billion was energy, and we had a $200 billion surplus in services. And so I, why I'm incredibly optimistic right now is that you know, I, I think we have the potential over the next five to 10 years to rethink you know, which technology is going to be a critical component, actually eliminating the entire trade deficit. What the US does so well is it thinks about it entirely differently. I no longer know what, what a service is or a product is because the service is embedded in the product. The US way of thinking about things is we, we tend to look and we say there is a market need, we do market analysis. We didn't understand that. We build a physical product, we drive it to its lowest components and sometimes that becomes commoditized. But what the real value creation is, 
We then decide what is the customer experience. We wrap services around it. We then be able to do global distribution. And we have this wonderful thing called social networking, which then allows us to get a closed loop feedback system. Nowhere in the world do people innovate in this method. I think if we set a national agenda, not just to export services, but to say, you know, we should eliminate the trade deficit. We use technology and practical applications, and we change the game of not just product and services, but how do you deliver an end-to-end -end customer service? I don't think anybody can do that. Mm -hmm.